founder of Sri Arman Physiotherapy Academy. And our today's class will be on levers of human body, a very important topic right from the second year. So to begin with, a lever is a rigid bar which is capable of moving around a fixed point called the fulcrum. Uh, a common day to day example will be a seesaw. Okay? So it will have a fulcrum, it will have an effort, and it will have a load, which is otherwise called the weight. Okay? So there will be one person exerting a force to bring up the other person on the other end. The same thing happens with a lever. When you have to lift a heavy object, you can use a lever. Say a, a rigid bar and a stone here. There is a man trying to lift this stone. Okay? So this is just a kind of example. And normally in a lever, we will have four components. In a lever, there is going to be a fulcrum, an effort and a weight or load, whatever. Lever in a human body will be nothing but your bones. Okay? Will be your bones. The fulcrum will be the joints. Fine. And then the effort will be by the muscle contraction. Muscle contraction. And the weight will be either the center of gravity or the segment to be moved or any load that is to be lifted. Okay? The segment to be moved or any load that is to be lifted. So these things, these are the components that we need to know by running a lever. Okay? So there is one more thing that is important which is the distance between the fulcrum and the weight. Okay? The fulcrum and the weight and the fulcrum and the effort. So the relative positioning of this fulcrum the weight and the effort. This will decide which class of lever it will be. Basically, levers are of three classes or three orders. So, it all depends on the positioning of the fulcrum, the weight and the effort. Getting into the order of levers, when we see the first order lever, the fulcrum will be in between the weight and the effort. So, what happens is, it can be at any part between the weight and the effort. There is something called mechanical advantage. This happens when the effort arm, that is this effort arm, when it is more than the weight arm, we get mechanical advantage. It normally happens in first class levers where uh, the fulcrum lies close to the weight. Here or anywhere in between. Okay. And uh, the opposite can also happen in first class lever. Lever, that when a first class lever, this part, if the effort arm is going to be less than the weight arm, it is very evident from the picture, this weight arm is less than the effort arm. Okay? So what happens? We lose mechanical advantage here. Okay. The mechanical advantage is producing the uh, desired result. So that is the thing. In the second order lever, the weight or the load lies always in between the fulcrum and the effort. And in third order lever, the effort lies in between the fulcrum and the weight. So, talking about the first order lever, the fulcrum is always present between the effort and the weight. It can lie anywhere towards the effort or like in this one, towards the weight. Both are first order levers only. And if it lies towards the, this one, weight, what happens is, the weight arm becomes smaller. Here the effort arm will be bigger. So, the mechanical advantage here will be always more than 1. Whenever the effort arm is more than the weight arm, the mechanical advantage is going to be 1. And in this one, you won't get any mechanical advantage since the effort arm is smaller than the weight arm. Okay. And getting into the example, the nodding movement of the skull. You have the nodding movement of the skull where the fulcrum lies at the atlanto-occipital joint. Okay? And the muscle, the posterior neck muscles, they will act as the effort. Okay? And the weight will be on the, on this part of the face. Okay? This part of your face is going to put the weight or the load. 
and his skull will act as the lever in this case. Okay, in this uh, example or this uh, order of lever is always called the lever of stability. Okay, and then the mechanical advantage may be present or may not be present. You will get the success for the effort here. Okay, getting into the second order lever, the weight is always present in between the fulcrum and the effort. So what happens here automatically is the effort arm is always going to be bigger than the weight arm. Okay, so the effort arm is always going to be bigger than the weight arm. Always. So there is always mechanical advantage in this kind of lever. Okay, so it will help to move uh, object of more mass than the force produced than the force that is trying to lift this object. Okay. So I have an example here. The common example. Whenever you try to stand on your toes, what happens is, the calf muscle will be acting as the effort. The calf muscle contraction. The metatarsophalangeal joint here will be your fulcrum. The lever will be the tarsal and metatarsal bones this part and the weight will be the weight of the body acting through the uh, midfoot okay so this is an example of uh, lever of second order and the lever of second order is always uh, for power okay and then there is always mechanical advantage that is present in this kind of lever these are the important points that you will have to know about the second order lever getting into the third order lever the effort is always present between the fulcrum and the weight. So what happens is, the weight term obviously will be more than the effort term. So there is no mechanical advantage in this kind of lever. It is always the lever of velocity. And it is for the speed and range of movement. So an example will be the flexion of elbow by the brachialis muscle. The elbow joint. What happens here is, the brachialis muscle at the point of insertion, when it contracts, it will produce the upward movement. The weight will be something held in the forearm, sorry, something held in your hand or uh, your hand, the segment itself will act as a weight. And the lever will be your forearm bones. And the fulcrum will be at the elbow joint. So, the effort is in between the fulcrum and the weight here. Okay? This is a classic example of third order lever. If we have the class order, synopsis is here. So, now by definition for a lever, na, it is a rigid bar capable of moving about a fixed point called the fulcrum. In the point which na, in the entire lever move out of If we have the C-sort, there will be a fulcrum in between. Clear? And there will be one person on one end and inner person on the other end. So, if we have a one person effort for the downward arm, in our person, in the effort may go down and he is going to move up. It is called mechanical advantage. Okay, you know? So, in the mechanical advantage in the brain, it is the efficiency of the effort over the load. Abhina, in the effort one, in the load of it, Adhikama Irindada, it can move that load upward. Okay, you know? So, this is the mechanical advantage of the lever. So, in the part in the first order lever, the fulcrum will be in between the effort and weight. In the fulcrum will be in the effort and the weight. And in the case, the effort arm and weight arm are equal. If the effort arm and weight arm are equal, if the weight arm and effort arm are equal. So, mechanical advantage is equal. If the weight arm and weight arm are equal. Second order lever ले effort आम येप्पो उन्हें weight आम अवेड़ परिस्साद मेरुको ओके इंगा इंद effort आम येप्पो उन्हें इंद चिन्न weight आम अवेड़ परिस्साद आरुको so mechanical advantage येप्पो में इंद order of lever ले रुको अधनाल इंद order ना lever of power नू सोगो ओके यां third order lever ले पाते हैं ना weight आम वंद येप्पो उन्हें effort आम अवेड़ परिस्साद so Lever's topic or important keywords, fulcrum, weight and effort. This is the order of levers. This is the mnemonic, fun with enjoyment. 
நீங்கள் எக்ஸாம்ஸ்க்கு யூஸ் பண்ணிக்கலாம் தேங்க்யூ